Hello and welcome. I'm Andy Shrimpton from GAATech.com and welcome to my series of articles which are being published in the Rotor World Helicopter Magazine. The first article is going to be on, on how to cut FR4 G10 with standard hand tools and some basic t power tools. For those of you who have read the article, it gives you basic information on ways and which tools to use and this video shows you how to use them. So the video is pretty much uncut. It was uh, shot to show you how easy or how difficult, as you're gonna find out, the tools are to use. Some work better than others, um, but they all work pretty well and you will be able to cut this material relatively easy. The only drawback with this material is the dust that it creates. It does give off a lot of dust, especially when we start using the power tools. The video does drag on a little bit. I think it was 50 minutes long in the edit suite, um, but I will try and put um, time scales in the description so you can whiz through it. But I didn't want to edit parts out so you can see in real time how the tools perform. It, it would have been too easy to cut segments out, um, but I felt that was doing you an injustice. So sit back, relax, get yourself a beer or a coffee and enjoy the next 50 minutes. Um, Andy Shrimpton signing out, many thanks. Okay, here's the range of tools we're gonna to be covering today. We have a permagrip needle file and holder. We have the permagrip uh, locking saw I believe they call that we've got a cutting disc permagrip cutting disc for the Dremel and unlike the standard Dremel ones this is a metal bladed permagrip encrusted cutting disc we've got the permagrip rubbing block fine on one side coarse on the other very nice tool really like that using that then we have obviously the safety goggles. We have a rotary bit in the Dremel. We have a standard metal file. We've got the permagrip um, like tile saw blade. They can be used, and, and like all permagrip tools, you know, you're not only going to use it on hard stuff like this, but you can cut wood, balsa, etc, etc. It's limitless what you can use them for. Um, bit of safety protection uh, because it's going to cause dust, no doubt. Standard hacksaw, 300mm. Uh, and then we have a permagrip encrusted jigsaw blade. So that's what we're going to cover today. Um, so let's set up and let's get, uh, let's get started as they say. Okay, and welcome back. So here we have a piece of 1.6 millimeter black FR4 set up on the somewhat temporary workbench, which is sitting on top of my CNC router. Um, so all we're going to do now is scribe a line down the material, and we're going to kick off with the large hacksaw to see how well a standard hacksaw can cut the material. And I'm using a 24 tooth blade. I couldn't find a 32 tooth, which would probably do a finer cut, uh, but we'll see how the 24 tooth one gets on. So all I'm going to use is an engineer square and an old electrical screwdriver. Just describe a line. Give me something to follow. And then just using the standard hacksaw blade and see how well we can get on. Okay, that went through like butter as you saw, and I've cut just proud of the line, and that wasn't a bad straight cut, but if you've ever used a hacksaw before, you're never going to be able to cut a dead straight line with the hacksaw. So I would advise all of you never to cut exactly on the line, always cut on the waist side of the material, and then rub back onto the line. 
So I'm now just going to put my dust mask on and we're going to use the the permagrip rubbing block just to rub that back nice and flat to the line. Okay, that's given a very nice silky smooth finish on that edge. Um, even on the bottom, that's silky smooth, and I just run it once over with the tool. Uh, now that's really, really good, and that is spot on the line. So a blind man would be pleased to see that. That's that's very very good so full marks to permagrip for making a tool which is actually flat so if you can see that that is a flat profile and that's given me a nice a nice straight line so I think that's thumbs up for the first test for the hacksaw so we're now going to try the the permagrip locking hand saw and I'll just zoom out a little bit so you can see this this is a saw that locks in the open position um, it is it appears to have a more coarser uh, grit on the blades I'm not sure how well that's going to cut the laminate but there's only one way to find out so as before, just going to scribe a line down the material. And see how we get on. Okay, not too bad. It has obviously cut through material, but I didn't find that quite as easy as using good old standard Mark 1 hacksaw blade. Um, just going to rub that back to the line now.
and again just a little bit more work there we have our straight edge again so not as easy as the hacksaw but that does do it and obviously that's more convenient to carry around in your in your toolbox etc so that wasn't a failure so now we're going to try the the permagrip tile saw so we're just going to score another line and see how we get on with that. The slight drawback with the uh, the tile saw is it's obviously smaller this way so I don't expect we're going to be able to cut this sheet in one go and this sheet is 170 millimeters wide um, but we'll just have a go. Okay, that's a little bit harder to to keep it on the a straight line that was. Obviously the tool is shorter and any movement in your hand you tend to wander and just towards the end I've wandered more onto the line than off the line. But that's gonna be no trouble for our magic tool. Just going to try using the coarser side now. And even that gives a, a smooth type touch to the edge. So highly recommend the permagrip rubbing block if you haven't got one um, finding it a very useful tool and there we go that's back straight as an arrow that's very good uh, right so let's just try what have we got we've got the Dremel so we've got the Dremel cutting disc Okay, it's, it's fairly weighty, comes with a obviously a nut with a lock washer 
um, feels a quality tool so we're going to put it in the Dremel now the advantage of with this it's going to start allowing us to cut curves obviously the first couple of tools with hard blades you only cut straight lines the tile saw we're going to come back to when we start doing curves but the Dremel disc here uh, I think will work particularly well uh, my main concern is the dust we're already getting quite a lot of dust on the floor um, that's why I had to put the vacuum on there it was it, I kept not being able to see the line that the dust that comes on to the top of the is actually quite fine and I just couldn't see where I was going so instead of keep stopping and rubbing it as easy to just turn the vacuum on but there is a, a substantial amount of dust on the catch sheet on the floor so I'm just going to pause now and set the Dremel up and I'll be back right with you okay next is the Dremel cutting disc that's all set up uh, let's just see how we get on obviously I'm concerned about the the dust in this one so obviously face mask goggles and vacuum Okay, that went through really, really easy as expected. The wires holding the tool there, sort of op in the open air, was it's difficult to control it to get close to the line. Um, but if you was doing this off camera, and the workpiece was set up differently, you would be able to control the tool a lot better um, and get nearer to the line. So that's cut it quite well. I'm just going to rub that back just a little bit. Mask back on. A little bit more rubbing back than the last couple of tools uh, because I was probably a millimetre off the line there. Uh, but no problem with the old magic rubbing blocks. Okay, just had a break away there because the memory card was full and I didn't realise. So I'm going to just again now um, reshoot the Dremel cutting disc doing curves. <laughs>
Okay, as expected really, um, quite difficult to cut a curve with that. Uh, one reason is the way I'm holding the tool, um, trying to do it on camera. I uh, hope I got it in shot. Um, if you were doing it off camera, you could obviously rest your hand on the material to make it guide. But it is a 30 millimeter cutting disc, so you're limited into the radius that you can you can do. Um, I'll just show you what I did. Okay, we're going to continue now with the Dremel with the rotary bits. Um, obviously, not the best of tools to to uh, cut a straight line. So obviously, made to do patterns and curves etc so um, we're just going to get that fired I'm going to put on some protection equipment and see how well it cuts the the hardest thing I think is going to be trying to get comfortable holding the tool while showing it on camera um, that's going to be the hardest bit Okay, as expected, it, it's it's a lot harder to get a straight line. That's quite wiggly. Obviously, that will rub back with the the rubbing block. But the tool is not designed really to do straight lines. So we're just going to now I reposition myself and we're trying to do some curves. Okay, that's the sort of the curvature that we did there. Um, the edges are a little, little bit rough, but then you know you, you would sort that out with a bit of emery paper. Um, but that was actually quite easy to come on focus. There you go. That was easy, quite easy to guide the tool. Um, I think it would be a lot easier if you weren't trying to do it on camera and you could use your hands to uh, help guide the tool along the surface of the material. But 
I think you could cut fairly intricate shapes, no problem with the perma grip sort of Dremel type round tool, um, no problem at all. This is, the sort, this is the sort of dust that we're creating on the floor, so you know dust is going all over the place so that's why it's important for you guys to wear the correct dust masks and obviously use extraction at the same time okay I'm just going to try using a standard metal file on uh, the perm uh, on the FR4 to see how well uh, a, a reasonably new uh, metal file rubs up uh, the material Okay, that would do it, but you can see that the file is sort of loading in the very fine teeth. Certainly not as effective as the permagrip rubbing block. So um, let's just square that off a bit. So there we have it. Okay, so we're getting towards pretty much the conclusion of the the video. Oh, let's uh, haven't done the uh, the tile saw with cutting a curve. So now we've got a slot open. I just set that up, get rid of the Dremel, and put on the dust mask again. And we just try doing a curve with the tile saw. Sorry for that little brief interruption. Uh, well, I'm back with you now. Okay, that was fairly easy. Um, I think you could follow. I think you could follow, you know, quite a tight pattern. Obviously, this, this was the part we did with the other, um, the Dremel, and then this section is following it with with the tile cutting saw. So I think you could do a fairly. A large radius curve, a smaller curves would be harder, and I'm sure you'd have to rub it up with a, a needle file to get the fine finish that we're all looking for. Okay, we just have the um, needle file now, and always, always have a handle on your files. You, you, you never want to grip a, a file in your hand. And start filing because you don't want the end of the file to go in your wrist. So always get a, a handle. Okay, this this file has um, quite thin, flat, but it's triangular in shape. So this part here 
is about three mil and it goes down to about a one mil so it's a tapered edge and I'm sure that's going to uh, be fine so we're just going to so again that that's taken the edge off the the material no problem at all we could even probably get inside Not so easy to fall on a curve with that. I'm not sure whether they do a, a, a flatter type fold, even a round fold, perhaps they do, I, I really don't know. But that's worked quite well. So, I think we've almost come uh, to know, we've got the jigsaw to do. So, I'm gonna set the jigsaw up and I'll be back with you. Okay, got the jigsaw set up, I'm just gonna put on my dust moss and we're going to do a straight line with the jigsaw to see how uh, easy that is to use. Okay, that is very, very easy to use. The only mistake I made was not having my workpiece secured properly. You probably saw it move in the, the video and it just made a little lump here as I couldn't guide the jigsaw along the line properly, but that worked very well. Um, so we'll just uh, reset that now and just try and do a wiggly line with the, the jigsaw. So this time I'm going to just put a couple of screws in the material, stop it from moving, so I'll be right back. Got the material screwed to the workbench, the far end, just with two small screws so it's not going to slip. The clamps really are just trying to stop the vibration of the material. So I'm just going to put my mask back on and we're trying to do a wiggly line uh, on through the FR4.
Okay, no problem cutting a wiggly line with that tool. Um, they do uh, the blades to fit the various types of jigsaws that you get different tops on the blade so make sure you buy the the blade to fit your saw and you know the, 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 the grit still looks good on the blade so that's it there so I think with that again you know you, you could follow quite an intricate design there doesn't seem to be any, well there isn't, there's, there's no breakout on the bottom of the material and running my fingers over there there's no real uh, burrs that you can feel but obviously just a brush up with a needle file, a bit of sandpaper, emery cloth on the bottom and the top that will get it lo lovely and smooth so I think that's a thumbs up for the jigsaw blade um, now what we've got left, drilling holes I suppose um, you, you can drill holes through FR4 G10 uh, with just standard high speed steel bits. Um, it probably makes it easier if you've got a battery drill with different speeds. Obviously make sure hammer is off. I'm just going to try and do a, a hole through this and see how we get on. There you go, that's through. Let's do a bit on, on the unsupported side. That's through. A little bit of breakout on the bottom. Uh, but that's just come off of my fingers. That's just probably the swarf coming out. Um, now, how about bigger holes? Let's find a bigger drill bit. And see, this is a 8mm, I think this is now. So they use the pilot hole that we've just done. See how. Um, make sure, obviously, you're 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 drilling through into a sacrificial board, and low speed is better than high speed, so it's not going to make the drill grab for you. And if you've got a battery operated one with a speed trigger, that's even better. As you saw, then the material did grip the. Uh, material so we'll just do another pilot hole and I'll make sure the material is clamped down this time So that's through. Let's see if we've got a bigger drill bit to hand. There's a, about a 13 there, so let's do another. So we do another pilot hole. Again, this may not work very well. All I'm going to try to demonstrate is obviously getting a pilot hole through first is critical so you get the centre right and really you should open the hole up in stages. We're going to now go to a 12.5mm drill bit and we'll see how well or how badly it goes through. Now that's gripping way too much. You can see the big bits of swarf coming off so I'm not going to continue with that and you can see here that you know the FR4 is being taken off in two bigger chunks, so that's not going to give you a big, a, a nice smooth hole. So I'm going to leave that there. That's a pilot hole. Now I'm going to open up to about eight mil. That went through nice, and now I'm going to go up to 12 and a half mil. Okay, that was that broke out as well. So 
I think the secret is in drilling to get a nice hole is go up in small stages. Um, I'll do a still picture of, of that breakout and blend it into the video somewhere but Uh, going from a 3mm to 8mm gave a reasonable hole the backs feel good uh, but jumping up too quickly you can see here that the um, uh, the FFR didn't like it and the surface finish you can see there's breakout so I think that just about concludes the video um, and obviously this the, these these series of videos run with the articles published in Rotor World magazine. Now, if you haven't seen Rotor World magazine, it's a, a magazine for helicopter enthusiasts in the model in uh, model uh, world. Um, I hope to do other articles, possibly some uh, CNC routing ones, obviously, and going to touch on 3D printing, um, domestic 3D printing, and the good points and bad points on 3d printing so if you've got any questions regarding the article in the magazine or the video please do drop some comments below uh, it'll help everyone that's watching them um, so I think it's a thumbs up for the tools we've used today I really like them all except for this one I found Although this is a well-made tool, which it locks out, the, the grit seemed to be the uh, best way to describe it. Possibly a little bit coarse and not consistent. So when, when I was sawing through the FR4, it, it, it wouldn't cut smoothly. I was impressed with how easy it is using a hacksaw. Now everyone should have a hacksaw in their workshop. Um, the spinning rotary bit for the Dremel worked really well. Um, the small rotary bit worked well, a little bit, well, quite a bit harder to use, although I think that was my positioning um, with the hand tool so if I was off camera you could probably use your uh, your free hand <coughs> to help guide the tool along the work um, so what I mean is you know if you're trying to do it free hand with one hand it's quite awkward but if, if you were doing it with two hands it's easy to guide the tool uh, and I did find a part for the Dremel it's not quite the right part I couldn't find mine but there is an attachment which screws on, I believe for the Dremel or hand tools, that would allow you to take the weight of the, of the tool onto the surface of the material. So that may help guiding the tool along the line. Uh, but this one was for more of a, a, a routing guide that I've taken off just to show you but I think Dremel do like a cone type shape made for plunge routing um, with bigger sort of viewing pan, viewing holes through them. So once obviously you've used this one, you can't really see what the tool is doing. So when it's plunged through, you can't see where the one that's made for it there's bigger openings in the side so you can you can follow the lines with it um but over overall very impressed um so i think i've proved today that the home hobbyist can cut g10 fr4 with these tools